we see Yeshua came to bring clarity. Somebody read out loud, nice and loud, Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Do not think that I came... Rabbi, can somebody else read it? I'd like one of our guests to read it. Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Now tell me what you have to do in order to um, exceed someone. Say um, you're a um, say you're a runner, and the person who ran the fastest doing a hundred yard dash was in six minutes. Tell me what you have to do in order to beat that runner running that, that hundred yard dash in six minutes, or six seconds, let's say. That's right. But the thing of it is you have to do what? You have to exceed. You have to do what they did and do that. Okay? You got it? So that means you can't, is it there any, is there any way possible to exceed what somebody does and not do what they do? Is that possible? This is not a trick question. Just think about it. In order to, for me to exceed the uh, speed limit of 50, in order to get to 55, I have to have gotten to 50. I, I can't skip 50 and go to 60. It doesn't work like that. That's the progression of speed, the progression of time. Okay? You can't get to quarter past the hour without first getting to five past the hour. You've got to exceed five past the hour to get to quarter past the hour. So what Yeshua is saying here, the lamp, the light of the world came into the world to bring clarity. And he said in Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but I came to complete it, to make it fullest, to bring it up to its fullest understanding. Now the thing that's wrong is people have gotten the concept that he was meaning, I, I fulfilled it. It's done. Jesus fulfilled it and he nailed it to the cross. How did Jesus fulfill and nail to the cross you honoring your mother and your father? That doesn't make sense. He can't fulfill that for you. That's something you have to do. We are called to honor our mother and our father. So, we are called not to bear false witness. We are called not to steal. We are called not to covet our neighbor's house, wife, husband, everything that they have, cars, jobs, vacations, boats, whatever. We are called to do that. Yeshua can't nail, didn't nail that to the cross. What he did was that he came to die to make reconciliation for the sin and the curse that happened in the beginning. That was his completed work. That was his work. And then we 
are to take his example and walk in the righteousness of his word, receive him, his shed blood, as the Messiah and as our risen Savior and Messiah to receive salvation. That's what we get to do. So there's a whole lot we get to do. So I think it's really funny when I hear people say Jesus did it all. I want to ask them, how did he do that? How did he do that? How did he do that for you? No, you, we get to do something. So what we get to do is we get to continue keeping the laws and the prophets because Messiah said, I do, do not think that I came to destroy them. I didn't come to destroy them. I came to bring them to their fullest understanding. I came so you would understand what Yahweh is trying to say to you. I came so that you would have life. And that's how we get life, y'all. Life and life more abundantly. Because what is sin? Sin is death. And then Pastor Paul, Rabbi Paul said, I, the only way that I knew sin was through and by the Torah, was by the law. If we break the law in the United States, go against the U.S. Constitution, what have we done? Hmm? We sin against the country, we can sin against the Constitution. What would the result be? Jail. That's right. It could be possible jail time. It could be death penalty. Sure could if it's bad enough. So, where there is a is no law, there's no sin. So, if Messiah did away with the law, then that means we would have no sin. So, that means any woman could commit adultery against her husband and it'd be okay because there's no sin. That means that someone could steal, rob, and kill. Kill. There's no sin. There's no law, so there's no sin. So we see Messiah saying that he's bringing it to his fullest understanding so that we can get an understanding of how not to sin. Now, does that mean what we will never sin? Mm -mm. That's what his blood is for. Hallelujah. That blood is the net. It's just like tightrope walkers. You know, they don't get up there without that net underneath them. Now, we've seen some that have, and a whole lot of them are dead. Or, you know, broken limbs, maimed, you know, put in all kinds. But most times, when you go to the circus, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, you see them up on the tightrope, or you see them swinging and doing the, the all their circus acts, way up, and they have this big, huge net. Now, what y'all tell me what the net is for? Just in case they see it. Just in case! That's it right there. Perfect. Just in case you slip up. And that's the beauty of Father Yahweh and his word and Yeshua. That Yeshua, that's why when the scripture says in John 1 and 1, I just love it. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is the beauty of Father Yahweh's word. That he didn't just leave it to the word to just be printed on paper or even that it would be imprinted on our hearts. But he even went so far, he went so many different levels to give us the truth that he said it in flesh. That he would walk it out and that he'd speak it. And then he'd say, no, y'all got it wrong. Let me explain to you what this is about. He always brought critical thinking to the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. Always. He had critical thinking going on. And they had to stop and think about those things. Because they knew what the Torah said. So here he was, a rabbi himself, saying, okay. The Torah says that if you commit adultery, 
that if you if you have um, sex with a woman, you commit adultery. He said, but I'm going to take it to another level. You look at that woman with sin in your heart, with your lust in your heart. Guess what? You already did it. So, Father Messiah Yeshua came to bring us the fullest understanding of his word, of the law. And does the law save us? No. The law is a set of guidelines. It's a set of rules. Just like on your job. Everybody's job has rules. 8 o'clock, you need to be here at your desk. You answer the phone. You do your whatever your, your, your duties are. And then at 12.30, you go to lunch. You come back. And then at 5 o'clock, you can go home. Break those laws on your job. You're going to soon get a call from human resources saying, please come to my office. And they will hand you a pink slip and say, it, things are just not working out. Why? Well, what happened? You broke our laws. You broke our guidelines. This is what we told you that you had to do. These were the circumstances by which you were hired. You broke your promise to keep these. So why we would think that the creator of the universe would have absolutely no laws to govern his people. Just doesn't even make sense. So Messiah came as the mercy and the grace of the Torah and of Father Yahweh to teach us and walk it out in front of us so we would know what a righteous walk looks like. And that's all it is. The walk of the keeping of the Torah of Yahweh, the first five books of Moses, the instructions, teachings and instructions, every class you go to, whoever went to a class and the professor started at the back of the book. Has anybody taken a class like that? Where they start all the way at the back and told you, okay, now I want you to solve these problems in the back. You can't solve the problems in the back without the instruction from the front. So we start at the front and we work ourselves our way back, just like with anything else. So it's the same thing with the walk of righteousness. That the, there's a set of rules that their salvation is clearly only in the person of Messiah Yeshua. Period. And he is the living waters, period. He is. He's our living waters. We drink from him. We accept him as our savior. We accept his shed blood. We make a turn. There's a thing that we do in Hebrew. It's called teshuva. And that means we turn back to the ways of the one true and living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We stop doing things the way that we would have done them, that we do them in the world. So just as the scripture said, we are in the world but not of the world. So now we stop doing those things and we have turned and made a change. So now we accept the living waters of Yeshua. And as we accept those living waters of Yeshua, we accept his instruction. And just as the law of adoption goes, you adopt a child, they get treated exactly like the other children that are in the home. Everybody abides by the same rules. So that's what Yeshua was trying to say. So in that word clear, in that one word clear, all of that is encompassed within Messiah Yeshua as being the lampstand in the midst of the throne, that he is the one that brings light and clarity. Because even in the temple, y'all, in the temple, did not, what brought light in the temple? The lampstand, wouldn't it? Because the lampstand, if you remember, was sitting right in the middle of, in, within the holy, holy place. And it was lit, and how long did it have to remain lit? Forever, continually. The priest that was part of their job, 
The lampstand had to be lit continually. That light could never go out. That's the light of Yeshua. He was the lampstand, depicted as the lampstand, standing in the midst of the temple and the holy place. Hallelujah. So now, we know what the living waters is, and then we know that um, the uh, Yeshua is the living waters, and we also know that the, he brought, came to bring clarity. Someone read uh, Luke 16 and 17. And this is going to be, this is going to give, be a second witness to what was read in Matthew uh, 5, 17 and 20. Uh huh. Luke 16 and 17. And it is easy for the heaven and the earth to pass away than for one title of the Torah to fall. Okay, so it says, and it is easier for the heaven and the earth to pass away than for one tittle of the Torah to fall. So he said, if all heaven and earth have not passed away, that means not one tittle, not one jot, not one yod of the word has passed away. Not one. Every bit of Father Yahweh's word stands, and it stands firm. It holds all the universe in place. So as we move on, then we go on in, in Revelation. We go back to Revelation, and he says, In the middle of the streets and on either side of the river, was a tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. 